Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm joined by Raphael Niston. He is the co-founder of Bricks and Agent. Raphael, how are you doing? David, fantastic. I'm on my eighth week of lockdown here in Sydney, Australia, so couldn't be better. <laughs> and uh, any sign of that letting up at any point? Uh, it doesn't look too great until the end of the year, it doesn't seem. We just got extended by another week, uh, sorry, another month today. So we'll be locked down until at least the end of September, which was supposed to be July, then August, then September. So you can see there's a trend happening here, and it's not a good trend. So that's a special plea to all our, what, our viewers and listeners today. Please keep Raphael busy. He'll be going out of his mind otherwise, right? 100%, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Raphael, give us a little bit of a brief overview. I mean, we spoke off, off camera about um, what it is that Bricks and Agent do, and obviously you're, you're sat in, in Sydney at the moment. Um, so tell us what Bricks and Agents deliver potentially to UK agents and um, you, a little bit about your background. Sure. So we sort of started on this journey about five years ago, just under five years ago now, and we started to look at how we would solve for maintenance, which is obviously the most complex and time-consuming process a property manager has. And from all the data that we've collected through the millions of jobs that we've processed over the years, we've worked out that a property manager is now managing more properties than ever. And there's a pressure on fee because there's a lot of new property management agencies that are reducing the price. So what that's correlated to is property managers are now managing more properties than ever. So they need systems to help them because on average, there's 20 touch points per maintenance request, 2.7 maintenance requests per property per year. So what that means is a property manager just with 100 properties has 5,400 touch points on maintenance alone. So there's a huge risk that they get overloaded with everything else they have to do. So we solve for that, that issue and that problem first up. And, and a lot of that sort of time spent in chasing up maintenance is, um, is very administrative and it can be extremely time consuming um, right. without necessarily delivering to a bottom line. So what I mean by that is, yeah, a tenant will call you, say, I've got a leak and you'll say, thank you, I'll come back to you. You pick up a phone to the plumber and you say, we've got a leak. And they say, right, I can be there Tuesday at two o'clock. You're back on the phone to the tenant. Then you have to get on the phone to the landlord, back on the phone to the plumber. If that's eight phone calls before you've even started it. And I suppose anybody that's thought about the amount of time that their staff spend on dollar productive behavior, if you like, or pound productive behavior, as we'd refer to it here, um, that saps the joy out of the, <laughs> the lettings and management oh, industry. Yeah. It's terrible. Right. I mean, they're spending up to 60%, if not more, of their day dealing with maintenance. And I think to your point earlier on, we, we had it summed up great by a veteran property manager of more than 20 years. She said her day in maintenance is like a glass of water. It sits on her desk. She has a sip. By the time she puts it down, it's full again. That's what she related the maintenance to. And to your point, exactly what's happening. Calls, emails, yeah. spreadsheets, all these manual processes in addition to everything else that the property manager has to do in another day. So, I mean, this is solving a, a huge issue and it's, a, it's an age-old issue really with, with our industry. And I'd imagine it's much the same over there in Australia as it is over here. Um, maintenance has always been dealt with in the same way. But now we have the technology to make our lives more, um, more productive. And I think it probably streamlines the process and it, um, if I'm not mistaken, not only is it going to add to your bottom line in, in terms of time and making your staff's life easier, but it's also going to improve the um, consumer um, process and the experience of the customer, both from the landlord and the tenant point of view. Correct. I mean, the biggest reason that tenants vacate a property is because they feel that it's not well maintained. So if we can keep all of those parties in one ecosystem, and all the communication is seamless and there's transparency across all methods. It makes for a lot of simplicity. So in terms of what we've built, we've, we've got what we've coined omni-channel maintenance. So you can post a maintenance request using WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, SMS, automated email, automated call, Google Home, the mobile app, WeChat, Siri, Alexa. We don't care how you post a maintenance request. So what we're trying to do is stop the tenant from doing all of these steps or calling a property manager saying, I've got a leaking tap. 
and they say, where's the leaking cap? How much is it leaking? Or a one-line email. And they're trying to collect this data, which is a nightmare in yeah. and of itself. And then, you know, the owners on the, on the other side, the owner saying, what is this repair? What do I need to do? Why is this an issue for? Do I actually need to approve this? So they can also use the same omni-channel tools to communicate with the owner as well. And by collecting that data well up front, where you've got pictures and or videos, and you've got a full description that we run through a triage or troubleshooting guide, the property manager has got all the information that they can share with the owner. And in turn, they can share that with the trade or the contractor so that when they go to do the job, they've got all the information at their fingertips, basically. Fantastic. So talk to us about the, the I've got a, a fairly good idea about what you guys do because I've, I've used similar systems in the past. Um, but talk, I know that every platform has some key innovations that are particular to you guys. So tell me about your take on this. Yeah, look, I suppose what we wanted to do is remove the manual and mundane. That's the main thing that relates in the property management world with regards to maintenance. So how do we do that in a way that uses smarts and technology? So our whole platform is based on machine learning and we use the insights that we collect from all these maintenance jobs to help property managers make smart decisions. So for example, we can tell you how long it takes to change uh, a washer in a tap in the centre of London. We can tell you how much that job's going to cost. We can tell you where the trade's going to be and when they're going to be available. We've got all of the smarts to be able to suggest to property managers what they need to do without them having to think and do a lot of the heavy lifting required to do it. So, you know, even to the extent where, because we have a trade platform that links in with what we've built, we can tell if a trade has too much work and that they're overloaded because we can see their time to complete work is increasing, their yeah. ratings are decreasing, and the number of jobs are blowing out. Because what property managers do is they say, this is my favourite trade, and they just keep They do, they just the load that guy, yeah. Yeah, and we, they just bought up. We're guilty of doing that within the industry. We, we ruin people. Um, that's what we do. So we find somebody that we particularly like and we just overload them with work and then and to the point that we can't stand them then afterwards because they're no longer able to get to it. So I suppose this, this levels the playing field a little bit for both sides. Well, we never see a trade ever saying, I've got too much work. They'll just keep accepting it until they just don't get any work anymore. And we've also built a full rules and automation engine that sits inside the platform that does all of that heavy lifting, reminds trades, automate closing of invoices, automate the tenant process. If a tenant posts a maintenance request after hours and it's marked as urgent, we can send it to the contractor straight away um, via SMS or via WhatsApp or via email, and they can go out and complete those works. So all of these little things that help a property manager's life is what we've uh, built in our solution. And in terms of your platform uh, and accessing it, um, obviously for, for trades to be able to use it effectively or for contractors to get a grasp of it, very often they can be sometimes a little bit tech phobic because they're used to being on the tools and they don't like to play around with, with stuff. Is it fairly straightforward? Can they, can, is it user-friendly? Yeah, well, look, we've, we've got 20... 22,000 trades, I think, use our platform all day, every day. And we have a raft of different people that use it. So we've got tech-savvy people. We've got very non-tech-savvy people. We're built with um, cloud-first, mobile-first, so they can use the device, they can use the mobile app. And we've built a whole suite of tools like check-in, check-out, GPS tracking, sign-on glass, integrations with software like Xero, or QuickBooks or Mile, different integrations with different accounting packages. But also, if we've got trades that don't like technology, they've got their own software that run their business, we've built an automation email. So what happens is the trade will send us an email, we'll strip all the data out of that um, email, whether it's an invoice or a quote, with pictures and or videos, we'll attach it through, and then it will appear on the dashboard for the property manager to go, yep, that's correct. And then it will pass back through to their um, property management software ready for payment. Fantastic. Um, and if the answer to this next question is no, I'm going to cut it out the webinar, but um, do you guys play well with others? Do you integrate with CRM systems and so on? Yeah, we, our philosophy is open API based. So we deeply integrate single sign on. We've also got the ability to white label the, the mobile apps and embed. We, for example, uh, with MRI software, who's obviously a big player in the property management space. Um, in our region, we white label our solution and it sits within their product suite so that it looks and feels just like one application. And that's our real strong suit. 
We've recently done an integration with Reaper, and there's another, a large number of other UK vendors that we're also looking to uh, integrate with, because that's where we get the most strength, where we take out the property managers, the owners, the tenants, the trades, and the property information, and then we push back the creditor invoice with the account credit attached. So all the property manager goes is, yep, and then it's ready for an accountant to submit. Fantastic. That's what we like to hear. I like to hear people that are uh, up for playing and integrating with others because I honestly believe that that approach is, is makes life easier for everybody. Why would you put barriers in the way of people being able to interact with your software in the way that they want to use it, um, which is which is fantastic. It has to work together, and it's a you know it's that close relationship where property management offices don't want nine pieces of technology that run their business that they have nine different logins for. They want to be able to say, well, everything's connected and all my data is syncing in real time and this is working a treat. So that's our big philosophy and wherever possible, we'll work with any partners across any vertical to integrate our solution um, awesome. as much as we can. Awesome. So talk, talk to us about um, the type of agent. Is this a, um, a suitable solution for small agents, uh, large agents, or is there a certain um, number of properties managed where this becomes more usable? Yeah, look, I suppose we started off with enterprise and we went for the big end of town. Our first client actually in the business manages just under 25,000 properties. So wow. they're definitely on the larger scale. Um, and then, you know, we, we also signed a contract with a group in the UK that manages 210,000 properties. So you know, the big end of town can certainly use us and they have the most pain with regards to maintenance. But we've also got customers on the other side of the coin where they may only have 100 or 150 properties and it's still something that helps them because it collects that workflow. It collects the tenant request. It helps with the trade selection. It helps with the owner selection um, and all of the workflows that go in between all of those different stakeholders. That's the complexity we're trying to take away in the software. We've built out all of those smart workflows to make their life easier. So... We have no aversion if someone's a small agency or if someone's a giant agency. It works for all people um, of all sizes of agency. And we've worked out and taking the big end of town and all their workflows and putting them in so everybody can use it. We always have a philosophy that we listen to clients. We love taking on their feedback and we are building something that is never bespoke. So if you've got a fantastic idea, we'll incorporate it, but it's for the good of everyone, not just for yourself. So we've had some fantastic ideas come out of that uh, philosophy. I love your uh, I love your take on it. I think that's a very healthy way to, to approach solving problems for, for agents, particularly where everybody benefits from, from the innovations that you're making. Um, and in terms of um, onboarding, if I wanted to get on board today, what, what's that process look like? How long is it until I'm using your your software? Yeah, generally it's a, a, a less than 48 hours. It's pretty much self-service, self-set up, self-training. We've built a whole heap of smarts in the platform. Um, we do also help people to onboard and we have a dedicated onboarding team that look after with account management too. But we've tried to simplify it so much because the reality is people are doing maintenance now. That's what they're doing. We're just doing it in a different way. So there's different workflows and there's a different way of interacting. But essentially, maintenance is maintenance. Whether you're in block management, whether you're in uh, residential, whether you're in commercial, it doesn't really make any difference to us. So our philosophy is because we are a technology company, we want to use technology to help people to get to where they need to. So there's a series that run, there's all the emails that come out, there's regular advice. We have weekly, bi-weekly webinars with different content. Um, but for you to get up and running, it's just a couple of days at most, um, a few things you need to do on your side and then turn the button on and everyone can be trained in their own time. Awesome. Now, obviously, all of your details and um, your latest kerfuffle deals can be found on your kerfuffle page um, and a link to, to that will accompany this video. But um, talk to me about your pricing. How is it priced? What's, what's involved? So we have a couple of different pricing points. We have two pricing models, one which we call our premium and one which we call our life. Our premium comes at no cost to property management offices. We take a percentage of the trade invoice at the end of the completed job. So the property management office doesn't pay. 
We also have the facility in our premium model to add a markup so that the property management office can also add a fee on top of our fee and therefore generate a, an income. So maintenance not only gets the efficiencies, but becomes a profit center as well. So it's very appealing if you're managing a sizable portfolio and you have a, a dedicated network of trades that you utilize. We realize that model doesn't work for everyone, however. So we have a light model and that light model is just a, a number of pence per property, depending on how many you've got in the portfolio. Um, and the only real difference is that we don't have the trade network with the light model. Um, they can still interact with the platform, but it's just simply via email. So we just don't have that trade network um, for them to be able to utilize all the functionality. But some people say that's fine for them and they just want to use it for their own internal business and help them. So we've literally got every spectrum of pricing covered, independent of what the client would like. And then on the premium model, am I assuming that um, the, the, the contractor or the tradesman gets paid through, the, through your platform or are they paid independently by the agents? They're still paid by the agent, but we charge them a fee when the job is completed. So that we, that's how we monetize the platform. Because obviously in that model, we don't charge the, the tradespeople, but the payment still would happen in the normal process where the funds would be debited from the owner's account um, and sent to them for the cost of doing those works. So, so in terms of that, on, on a premium model, settling your bill as such, is that being paid from the contractor or is the, is the agent deducting that and giving it to you guys? No, so we take the money from the contractor directly. From the, contract. the way we price that is once the property manager reviews the job and they say, yep, that job's cool, great, that's when we take our fee and we just withdraw that from their credit card that's on You're file. a brave man chasing contractors for payments. That's That's got to be a full-time job. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a great story because we've set up all of our integrations so that um, if, the, if there's no funds in the, in the contractor's account or the credit card is non-functional, the invoice doesn't pass through. So unless we get paid, uh, they don't get paid. So it's, um, it's, it's a very interesting model in that regard. And it's worked really well. Uh, last financial year, we had $36 of bad debt for the entire year. That's not bad going at all. No, it's not bad. In, in anything to do with tech or property, I think $36 is something that can be boasted about. So that's, I think that's, it has, yeah. That's superb. That's superb. Um, Raphael, that, that's absolutely superb. It gives us a, a really nice overview um, to, to your product. And if anybody wants a, um, a look around it and you're going to take them through on a, a, a demo, um, I presume that's fairly easy to, to book and, and one of your guys will be in touch to arrange that. Definitely. Yeah, we'd love to showcase the product. And as I said before, we love to work with clients. We love the interaction and we love to learn how we can make their business more efficient because the best ideas we've had for our platform have come from our customers. So um, always happy to chat, always happy to make uh, the, the experience as best as we can. And our motto is always to delight our customers on all sides of the coin. Fantastic. Raphael, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, David. Appreciate it.